Welcome everyone. It's Wednesday. Um, I thought today I'd focus on a when I actually first learned about this this idea of self-directed positive neuroplasticity is from a teacher and a friend of mine, Rick Hansen, who wrote written some wonderful books about neuroplasticity and then this this idea of actually directing our own plasticity through experiences. And so I thought today uh, we we'd do one of his um one of his sort of foundational practices. And just a reminder as to why this works or you know why why we do what we do. Here's one of our our ancestors from tens of thousands of years ago. And we are basically the descendants of these uh you know nervous, twitchy, anxious, irritable uh beings. Um and our nervous system has has not really changed that much since those days. And the reason we're nervous and anxious and irritable is because of what's called the negativity bias. And so what that means is, you know, as as our ancestors and as we sort of stare into the abyss of this black hole in the jungle and we start hearing noises or things start happening we have a couple of choices. Uh, these are, again, these are sort of unconscious reactions that are based on certain assumptions. So one assumption is that sounds dangerous and I should run. And then the other assumption is that's nothing. It's just a squirrel or a little, little animal and I can relax. Now the payoff for our ancestors making those two very different assumptions and, and responding differently literally had to do with life and death and whether or not, um, their their genetic code was passed on and so you know the the making the assumption that there's always something dangerous and something that can hurt me um keeps me alive so even if i assume that it's a wild animal and it turns out just to be a little bird other than maybe a bruised ego and some ribbing from my you know from my my tribe mates i'm still alive i, I get to see another day and i get to pass my genes on uh, the flip side is if I assume that it's just a little squirrel or a bird and it turns out to be a dangerous animal, well, then it's game over and I, I don't, I no longer exist and my genes aren't passed on. The point being, we are literally genetically the descendants of these, you know, nervous, twitchy, anxious uh, ancestors. It's just that our situation has changed, right? We're not necessarily staring into uh, scary black holes in the jungle. We're getting frustrated over the fact that, oh gosh, maybe I got a, you know, a computer virus or my Wi-Fi is not working or fill in the blank. That's, you know, that's what, that's where the negativity bias gets activated for us. So how do we counteract that? Well, Rick Hansen calls this growing the good. And he points out that uh, everything in our brain, so all changes structurally and functionally that take place in our brain, are the result of repetitive experiences. And wouldn't it be amazing if we spent more time choosing positive experiences that we want? Wouldn't that help counteract this negativity bias by showing and demonstrating our brain that this is this is what's important to me, you know, kindness, calmness, um, uh, love, gratitude. These are all behaviors and experiences that we can very intentionally stimulate and if we do it properly and really give our brain a good soaking of that experience, then uh, we actually are changing the structure and function of our brain to be more predisposed to that, that experience. So there's three steps to this that I'll, that I'll guide you through. The first one is just to have the positive experience, meaning look for positive facts. And the truth is there are positive facts in pretty much everything. Um, so no matter what situation we find ourselves in, if we can reorient and reframe our attitude towards that situation and say, okay, maybe this sucks, maybe this is scary, maybe this is you know disheartening. Let me slow down for a second, actually look for something positive, you know, what might be positive here. And then number two is to actually savor those positive facts as an embodied experience. So rather than just glossing over it and saying, yeah, yeah, okay, that you know, that's wonderful, that's positive. Um, we actually say no. Let me. I'm. I'm going to really slow down, and actually do a bit of a body scan and notice where in my body do I feel the positivity, and uh, and so on. 
And then this idea of deepening and holding this positive experience for at least 30 seconds. So our brain needs some time to actually absorb the experience and give our neurons and our synapses a chance to, to catch up and, and form. So let's go ahead and do that for a few minutes. So as always, uh, start by closing your eyes. Let's take 60 seconds to just orient in space and time to being right here, right now. Our body's here. Question is, where's, where's our mind? And can we bring body and mind into the same space? Maybe you've had a, a busy morning. Just notice the simplicity of right here, right now. We're just sitting, just breathing. And we're taking care of ourselves. We're, we're choosing to spend just a few minutes train our brain to help our nervous system calm down and really be as conscious as we can be for this experience. Now bring to mind a memory of a positive experience. Um, can be a conversation, maybe a heartfelt, loving conversation that you had with someone. Maybe it's a favorite meal that you were eating or a beverage, something that you were drinking. It doesn't have to be the most profoundly positive experience ever. It can just be something that felt positive to you. And see if you can go back to that place and time in your memory and notice what was positive about it. So find the positive in that experience and get explicit about it. I mean, what exactly is it about the food that tastes good or the presence of this person you were with, or the place that you were walking? What, what is it about the memory that you had that makes it a positive experience? And then favoring and deepening the experience, so really trying to add as much resolution as you can to the memory. Maybe even imagining yourself going back in space and time to that place. Just noticing how does it feel in your body to be experiencing that Positivity. Where do you feel it? And if your mind wanders, that's okay. Just gently bring it back to this positive memory.
I have the saying that positivity is like Teflon for the brain, whereas negativity is like Velcro. Again, just noticing if your mind is having a hard time really sticking with this positive memory. That's again, it's okay. It's normal. And just gently practice returning and steeping and savoring positivity. Especially noticing where in your body you're experiencing this memory. Taking a deep breath in. On this exhale, keep your eyes closed and bring to mind a friend, someone that you care about and a recent interaction with them. Again, just noticing positivity that seeps through this memory. Noticing what they were doing, what they were saying, where you were. And noticing the feeling of what it's like to be in their presence. Aware in your body, it feels good your chest, your belly, your hands, your head. A big part of this process is actually just slowing down and noticing where positivity resides. And take a deep breath in. And on this exhale, go ahead and open your eyes. Um, yeah, maybe the next time you see this person that you brought to mind, uh, you might feel compelled to give them a hug or let, let them know that they were part of your, your memory this morning. Um, and also just a reminder that while we can use memory to you know, there's, there's almost like a like an infinite number of times we can go into any given memory and relive it and experience the positivity in it. And we can also obviously do that in any given present moment. So if you find yourself, you know, in conversation with someone or in the presence of someone that you feel really good about, simply having the awareness and noticing that and then really taking that in in that moment uh, neurologically does has the same effect as as going into you know, a memory and steeping in it that way. So um, anyway, hope, hope this is helpful. Another, uh, you know, free practice that you, as far as I know, you can't really overdo this. So hope that was uh, a useful one and we'll do some gratitude tomorrow. Same time, same place. Hope you have a great day. Take care, everyone.